Let's take a tour through our nephrons so that we can understand exactly how water is handled. So, if we start at our proximal tubule, the proximal tubule reclaims most of the water and electrolytes that's filtered through the glomerular basement membrane. So, in the tubular fluid, right there at the proximal tubule, our tubular fluid is going to be ice osmotic to our plasma osmolality. Once we get to the thick ascending limb of the loop of Henle, remember what's there. That's the NKCC2. We are going to reabsorb sodium and potassium and chloride, and that helps to generate our osmotic gradient in the medulla associated with the vasa recta. But remember that also, that segment is impermeable to water. So it's what we refer to as our diluting segment. The next segment to pay attention to is the distal convoluted tubule and early collecting duct, which will again reabsorb more sodium chloride at that sodium chloride co-transporter and impermeable to, impermeable to water. So it generates a very diluted tubular fluid or urine at the top of the collecting duct. Once we get to the collecting duct, then the ultimate concentration of urine is really going to be determined by whether or not we have ADH present. Now, ADH stands for antidiuretic hormone. It's also termed vasopressin. We're going to be talking a little bit more about that in some slides to come. So what happens when we have an acute water load or need to excrete free water? We can accomplish this by reducing our urine on os osmolality to as low as 50 to 75 milliosms per liter. But it requires normal renal function to do that, meaning that a couple of things have to be true. Number one, we have to have delivery of solute and water to those diluting sites. So if that's compromised by re things like renal failure, for example, or volume depletion, where we don't have appropriate solute delivery to those sites, that can impact our ability to actually get that urinosome down to the, as low as possible. We also have to have proper functioning of the diluting segments. Again, this can be compromised by people who are taking diuretics, things that block that sodium potassium 2 chloride co-transporter like loop diuretics in the thick ascending limb of the loop of Henle can really impair our ability to get our urine dilute as possible to excrete that free water load. ADH also has to be absent at that collecting duct, meaning that it has to be impermeable to water. So if ADH is present, remember what's going to happen is it's going to cause reabsorption of water by insertion of aquaporin channels into that collecting duct. So again, in order for us to make a dilute urine, we have to have solute delivery, we have to have those diluting segments open, and we have to make sure that ADH is suppressed. Now, what if we want to retain significant free water? We can actually do that by making sure, by concentrating our urine osmolality to as high as 1,000 or 1,200 milliosms per liter. And we can do this by developing a concentrated medullary interstitium by solute reabsorption in the thick ascending limb. Again, that thick ascending limb and that diluting segment has to be intact in order to reabsorb sodium to generate that concentrated medullary interstitium. We also have to have the presence of ADH. ADH has to be released and present in order to stimulate the insertion of aquaporin channels into the apical membranes of our collecting duct cells. Not only does it have to be present, the ability of the collecting duct cells to respond to the ADH by inserting those aquaporin channels has to be intact as well. So these three things are critical in order to maintain or generate a very concentrated urine.